Hey everyone! How are we all doing? I'm doing just fucking great. <sighs> right. Okay, let's get let's get into this. Let's get into this. Um Okay, I'm gonna give it a second for people to show up properly. Um, I am... Um, I just finished an editing stream and I found out this news about, um, about Rosie Duffield and I wanted to just hop back on stream and talk about it. So let's talk about it. Um, as people arrive, I'll let you know, um, Rosie Duffield has, um, made a statement to the Sunday Times... Sunday Times is, of course, of course, paywalled, so um, we can't uh, we can't actually read read that without creating an account to subscribe to read her fucking garbage. So um, so I'm gonna read this uh, what the trans thread instead um, because they do pretty good reporting reporting on this stuff, and I feel they won't leave anything out. Uh, we won't get any less value from from them than we would from the Sunday Times. So this is a thread about why the Sunday Times report about Ro Rosie Duffield is probably bollocks and the result of, of Weasley words. Okay. The Sunday Times has a report about Rosie Duffield. Headline and subheading. Speakers anger as extremists terrorize Labour MP Rosie Duffield. Threats after feminist branded transphobic. So, extremely fucking disgusting, and anyone who saw my speech about the media in this country and how they play the transgender debate um, should understand exactly what's going on here. Uh, what kind of threats? Death threats? Violence? Let's take a look at the article. Opening paragraph. We learn from this that she has received online threats, so we know that she... So we know how she got them. Not clear yet on what kind of threats. If they were death threats or threats of violence, wouldn't they be in the headline? Maybe not. Let's keep going. The Speaker of the House of Commons has made an unprecedented intervention over the security of politicians after a female MP was forced to pull out of the Labour Party conference later this week, later this week after receiving online threats from militant transgender activists. Okay, got a quote from the Speaker of the House. So Lindsay Hoyle said elected representatives should be able to appear publicly without fear of harm after Rosie Duffield revealed she would miss the conference which begins in Brighton on Saturday. Goes over her, her history of transphobia. Only women have a cervix, apparently, that trans women should be excluded from public spaces required by human beings to function in society. Same old, same old. Okay, the threats are apparently serious enough that Duffy will not be attending the Labour Party's annual conference. Let's take another chunk and see if it tells us any more about the threats. Threats of intimidation. What does that mean? What the hell did these militant trans activists uh, threaten to do to Rosie Duffield? How have we not got, got that yet in a news article about that? Hoyle said, Parliamentarians who have been elected to speak up for their constituents should be able to attend their own party conference without fear of them. I'm trying to keep calm right now. I'm trying to keep calm right now. But I know someone who lives in Rosie Duffield's constituency who is transgender. And I think that the responsibility is much more on MPs to uh, make their constituents feel safe than the other way around, actually. That is my personal opinion, but I think that MPs shouldn't engage in behaviours that make their constituents feel like their local elected official is a danger and a threat to them. Um... Too many people have been targeted for their opinion or the office they hold. Okay, this is fucking gibberish. That is just unbelievable levels of fucking gibberish. And I'm trying not to yell at this point because the office you hold isn't your gender. It's not your race. It's not some other immutable characteristic. It is power over people. It is a role where you affect people's fucking actual lives. 
and to say that you just, you're being targeted for the office you hold is fucking ridiculous. Like, yes, you're being targeted because you hold an office and you are using that office, you are using that power to hurt people. That's a good reason to be targeted. But again, they haven't actually discussed what she's been targeted with. In order to protect democracy, this is full on like absolute fucking liberal fast shit. Where it's like wielding the idea of like freedom and democracy. Like trans people are a threat to democracy now. Okay, right. Cool. Fucking incredible. In order to protect democracy, we need to ensure those participating can do so without threats of intimidation. How about the fucking threats that Rosie Duffield implicitly makes to all trans people when she says that trans people existing in society creates a situation like Gilead for cis women? How about those threats? How about the threats that trans people receive on a daily fucking basis. How about when I, how about when I gave a speech asking the government for our basic rights, right? At a protest asking the government for our basic fucking rights to be met. And my speech was about the media and how they lie about us. A, a fascist agent from Andy No took upskirt pictures of me that Andy No posted to his million followers. Should we measure that up against anything Rosie Duffield has received? Because I am not an elected MP. I have not run for office. I am just a trans woman asking for my basic human rights to be met. I am asking for this country to end medical segregation that treats trans people as second class citizens. Right? That's what I am doing there. And I have a million people looking up my skirt and calling me a man and threatening my life, okay? Against Rosie Duffield's what? We still don't even fucking... <sighs> More quotes from Duffield where she says she believes those who attack her views are mostly straight white men and some women who want to be very woke. So that's the people who attack her views. Is disagreeing with someone a threat now? A few things here. If you wanted to be the center of attention, why are you not be the center of attention? Why are you talking about it to the fucking Sunday Times? Also, do you think you're going to be attacked? Attacked physically, right? So the quote in the article says, Duffield, who chairs the Women's Parliamentary Labour Party, took the decision not to attend the conference after being advised it was not a good idea. She said, I mainly took the decision not because I really thought I was going to be attacked, but because I did not want to be the center of attention. We have had Labour MPs who have had to have security at the conference over the past few years, and I didn't want that sort of attention or to become the story. I just thought it was, it was better for everyone if I quietly stayed away. Okay. Unbelievable fucking scum fuck hours. I am really trying to stay calm here, but this is fucking disgusting. Right. If I quietly stayed away, seriously, then why did you talk to the paper? Like, why did you go to the paper to explain how you're in, in danger from the, the militant trans activists? Fuck off. Fuck the entire fucking way off. Look. Rosie Duffield is making a gambit here. Okay? She is saying that she wants the Labour Party to act on turf beliefs. She is saying that she wants the Labour Party to investigate intimidating threats against her and, and push back against trans people and push trans people out of the party, frankly. That is the subtext to what is going on here. Okay? And I say, fucking good. Because the right wing of the Labour Party deliberately sabotaged Labour's chances in 2017, where we lost by 2,000 votes. Okay, 2,000. That is so easily a number that could be achieved if you didn't have half your party sabotaging your election efforts. So right wing Labour MPs, fucking red Tories like Rosie Duffield, fucking Keir Starmer, okay, Jess Phillips, my local MP Neil Coyle, these fuckers, okay, who fucked over the party, and we could we could have been four years into a Corbyn a Corbyn administration at this point. But more to the point, a Labour administration. It doesn't even fucking matter that it's Corbyn or what fucking pol like what particular factionalist politics you believe in within the party, right? The Tories would have been out. So these 
freaks, these craven little fucks, these psychopaths, who act like they care only about getting elected and getting the Tories out, sabotaged Labour's electoral chances because they didn't like the guy who was in. Okay? And since then, Keir Starmer has been driving people in droves away from the party, deliberately purging the left wing of the party ever since he's been in as the elected leader. And you know, I say fucking good. Because if these little fucking freaks, these liberal fucking psychopaths want the party, they're fucking welcome to it. Because Keir Starmer is bankrupting the party. Because under Jeremy Corbyn, it became the largest electoral party in Europe. Because we had so many fucking members. Because people liked what he had to say. Do these sick little fucks think that red wall voters are going to be won back over by feminist is being threatened by trans militant? It's going to sound like fucking gibberish London left wing woke nonsense to them. Okay, to the to, to be clear to the straw man these people have in their heads of the of the northern voter who switched from Labour to Tory. It's gonna to to that person whose vote Keir Starmer's been trying to win win back by fucking flags on national television, right? But but to that person that Starmer's been trying to trying to win back over by coming on pictures of the Queen, right? That person isn't gonna look at this and go, "Yes, the Labour Party is for me," right? This is trying to capitulate to a tiny, a tiny little fascist minority the gender-critical feminist community. Most trans people are feminists. The gender-critical feminist community don't represent what feminists think in the slightest. They are a fringe movement of fucking obsessed transphobic weirdos. Just look at fucking Graham Linehan, right? Rosie Duffield thinks that most people who disagree with her are straight white men. Fucking look at Graham Linehan! Graham Linehan has personally harassed two people I know in real life. Not people with platforms, not MPs, because, oh, here's a fucking shocking one. There actually aren't any fucking trans MPs. There actually aren't any fucking... Labour can't ask their fucking, their fucking trans MPs if they feel safe going to the fucking party conference. Because there aren't any, you sick little fucks. And to anyone who's on the fence, who watches this at any point, my language is strong right now because of them being fucking disgusting. If you think I'm being uncivil, if you think I'm being lewd, if you think I'm being too crude with anything I'm saying, I advise you, I advise you politely to grow the fuck up and take your head out of your ass, you fucking moron. Seriously. Because my fucking rights, my human rights, are under attack constantly in this country. We are living as second class citizens as our, as our supposed national healthcare system is treating us as second class citizens. Cis people can get the same medications trans people can get easily at the fucking, at the fucking drop of a hat from their GP. Trans people have to go onto a waiting list which has no end point in sight. There are 10,000 people on the waiting list. They have no intention of treating trans people. They have no intention of making our lives bearable. Okay? They have the intention of driving us out of sight, driving us out of society in an, in an attempt that should be called exactly what the fuck it is. Genocidal. I won't stop saying this because it's the fucking truth. Shit like Rosie Duffield is doing here is part of a genocidal effort against trans people in the UK. Okay? Denying us healthcare, driving us out of public life, trying to stop us accessing things as simple as fucking bathrooms just to, just to be able to fucking piss. Come on. Come the fuck on. If you think I'm being crude here, if you're watching this at any point now or on the archive and you think I'm being uncivil, you think I'm being crude, I can only say, learn to act as a fucking adult and grow the fuck up and understand why people whose rights are under attack might be upset. Okay? Look, 
Rosie Duffield is creating a gambit here. She's trying to make an ultimatum for the party. To make the party capitulate to her weird little fascist freaks. And I say good, because Keir Starmer has made Labour historically unpopular. They can point to the 2019 loss. They can point to Corbyn losing all these seats. But we know who was sabotaging the party from the inside, both in 2019 and in 2017, where we could have won if they weren't doing it. We know who was working with the Lib Dem, tactical voting, all of this fucking gibberish, okay? We know who did this. Keir Starmer represents them. He is their... He is their caretaker to drive while they purge the left from the party. And as I've said, if they want the party, they're fucking welcome to it, because Keir Starmer is making Labour bankrupt, and Labour will die shortly. Mark my fucking words, Labour is done. So when, La when, Rosie, when Rosie Duffield and other obsessed freaks like this do shit like this to the Labour Party, try to make the nominally left-wing party of our country into a constituency for fucking obsessive transphobic freaks, go ahead! Fucking go ahead, because because Keir Starmer has said that he won't take part in a progressive alliance. He has said, right, amidst his, his awful polling, he has said that he won't take part in a progressive alliance to defeat the Tories. So fucking good. If the Labour Party dies, fucking good, because a progressive alliance could win in this country against the Tories. And if Labour isn't drawing votes away from it, it's all the more likely. And if it wins, it'll put in proportional voting, and we won't have to deal with Tories of Boris's stripe or of Keith's any fucking more. Bye 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 is all I can fucking say. Go ahead. Make the Labour Party full of turfs. Just do it. Just fucking do it, Rosie. Just fucking do it. Have your tantrum. Have fucking, have the fucking Labour Party be filled up with turfs because you're unsafe. You're so unsafe going to, going to the conference because you keep being a fucking bigot. You're so unsafe going to this conference that there are no trans MPs at because there are no trans MPs in your party. Go ahead. Have it. Literally, just have it. It's all yours. I make no claim to the Labour Party anymore, okay? I make no claim whatsoever to the Labour Party anymore. It is not my party. It is Rosie Duffield's party. She can fucking have it. If they were death threats, bomb threats, threats of physical violence, do you honestly think the Sunday Times is going to leave that out? Nobody would leave that out. They got to get subscribers. They got to get peepers on their content. It goes on, covers stuff that isn't specifically about Duffield. It talks about how an MP received anti-Semitic abuse and a mention and mentioned that every female MP has had a lot of abuse, stalkers, and police involvement with obsessed people. There are many Jewish members of Labour, councillors, and MPs who are under investigation from the Labour Party, or have been recently, until they pointed this out and had it dropped, for anti-Semitism as part of Starmer and the right wing's attempt to purge the left from the party. Jews in Labour under, under investigation for anti-Semitism. And if we had a press that cared the slightest fucking wink about the truth, that would be a fucking front page news. Starmer is trying to purge the left from the party. Starmer is trying to, to investigate Jews for anti-Semitism in his party as part of a leftist purge. No. 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 Why report on the truth? Why report on the truth when you can make money? <sighs> so, militant trans activists have done threats, non-specific, and the article about it likens her being called a transphobe by many, because she is one, with being stalked 
and further up it puts it in the same category as the Capitol Hill attacks and the murder of MP Joe Cox. Fantastic. Incredible. Let me tell you a funny thing from Jess Phillips' book. Jess Phillips makes, makes a comparison to the murder of MP Joe Cox, where she compares... She compares... People calling her and other Labour MPs on Twitter traitors because, this one's not hard to figure out actually, the Labour movement, it's kind of there in the fucking name, Jess, is meant to represent the working class and fight alongside the unions and fight back against the Tories and against austerity, and against neoliberal, brainworms, fucking gibberish nonsense. And ever since Blair came in, and won over the appeal of the country by being best pals with Rupert Murdoch, a Labour leader that the Sun newspaper approves of is not a Labour leader. That is a Tory. This isn't hard to fucking figure out, actually. Ever since Blair came in and did this to the party, there's been this huge constituency of Blairite, centrist, neoliberal, red Tories in the fucking party, who are, because they are Labour MPs and have been elected to represent Labour, to represent Labour, it's in the fucking name, right? And then they're voting for neoliberal, free market fucking gibberish. They're voting against the unions. Starmer has been alienating the unions enormously, actively driving them away. He did an interview in the paper where he said that the union, <laughs> that Labour should seek less support from the unions and more financial backing from donors. Right? That is very obviously a betrayal of um, the basic thing you're supposed to stand for. Just like the basic, basic thing you're supposed to stand for. That's why you get called a traitor on Twitter. And she was likening this to the murder of Joe Cox by a neo-Nazi, by a neo-Nazi who called her a race traitor. How someone could be so fucking craven as to compare their own constituents calling them a traitor for, you know, betraying them, to a neo-Nazi calling someone a race traitor before they kill them in a, you know, neo-Nazi motivated murder. How someone can be that craven is fucking beyond me, honestly. That is a level of brain worms I cannot imagine having the murder of the murder of Joe, Joe Cox. Like the actions of neo Nazis, the actions of fascists, and you're trying to link this up to be comparable to the actions of socialists, the actions of angry people on Twitter, the ang the actions of trans people who are treated as second class citizens by this country who are trying to be pushed out of public life by this country, by this country's government, by this country's <laughs> official opposition party, really cool, by this country's media, right? You can compare the actions of fucking neo-Nazis to us. Do I need to say what I would say here? Do I even need to say it? I've said it already. You can see I'm angry. You know what I would say. I'm not even going to bother saying it, okay? Comparing the actions of trans people to Nazis. Come on. Come on. And if you're watching this now or at a later point on an archive, okay, and you don't know that the Nazi book burnings, right, the most famous images of Nazi book burnings are literally the literal Nazis from 1930s Germany, those ones, 
right? The indisputable ones. Not the ones where I would say, that guy's a Nazi, and you would go, no, the Nazis were a party in Germany in 1930, and I would go, well, no, he got a gun, and he murdered MP Joe Cox, and he had, like, a, had swastika flags on his wall, and he identified with the Nazis. He's a Nazi. Not those ones where you would dispute that because you're a craven little liberal freak, but the, like, the, the ones you wouldn't dispute. The most famous images of Nazi book burnings were when the Nazis raided and destroyed the archives of Magnus Hirschfeld and the Sexual Wissenschafts Institute in Berlin. A, an institute that had been treating tens of thousands of trans people for decades. Because guess fucking what? Guess fucking what, Rosie? Guess fucking what, Jess? Guess fucking what, Keith? We weren't invented in 2015. We've always fucking been here, actually. There's references to trans medicine, to transition healthcare, in Ovid, you little craven freaks. There was a transgender Roman emperor, okay? We've always fucking been here. We weren't invented in 2015. And the original Nazis' most famous images of book burnings were them burning research into trans people. So comparing the actions of trans people <laughs> to the actions of, of fascists invading Capitol Hill, the murder of Joe Cox, I'm not even going to say what I would say, because I believe you, even you, the craven lib, fence sitter, right, watching this, who thinks I'm being uncivil, even you are smart enough. Even you can rub your little brain cells together and figure that one out. I'm really sure. I believe in you. I'm that kind-hearted. <sighs> Let's get on with this thread. I am fucking mad. <laughs> they can't ask any trans MPs whether they feel safe at the Labour Party conference because there aren't any. There aren't any. We are a tiny minority who are fucking massively disenfranchised. We are experiencing medical segregation. We are being pushed out of public life by the government, by the opposition, and by the media. <laughs> and Rosie Duffield thinks it's fucking worth her time to be doing this shit. Rosie Duffield tried to put through a, a, a motion where she was uh, trying to criminalize um, Knox canisters. My girlfriend responded to her on Twitter and asked for evidence. F asked for some kind of source to be cited for why they're dangerous. And Duffield blocked her. I promise my girlfriend is infinitely more civil and polite than I am, and was sincerely just asking for any evidence of why that should be the case. And she blocked her. These people aren't interested in democracy, okay? If we're going to go back to defending democracy, this fucking ridiculous shit they were saying before, in order to protect democracy? If we're gonna go back to that shit, right? The people who are uninvested in democracy are the people who are sabotaging a fucking election because they don't like the leader of their party, deliberately sabotaging the election because they don't care if the, if the Tories stay in forever and ever and ever because they would hate to see a mild socialist <laughs> in charge. Oh, goodness gracious me. These same fucking people don't care a fucking jot about democracy. Right. Militant trans activists, we read this bit already. So, then she attacks non-binary people, because of course. The Sunday Times paints this as her not refusing to speak out on the issue of whether we should be allowed to use public facilities that humans need to participate in society. Very cool. 
So, I would bet all the money in my bank account that this got cooked, and the threats are just trans people pointing out she's a transphobe, which she is, and the Sunday Times now portraying trans people speaking out as militant and threats. If they were death threats, threats of violence, threats that were threats, how would they not include that? I completely agree. I completely and utterly fucking agree. Let me just highlight this for a minute. She attacks non-binary people. Those who are familiar with me, you may know I'm non-binary. I identify as a woman, I also identify as non-binary. For people who might be watching this who don't understand that situation, you can walk into bubblegum, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's convenient. I, 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 I can tell people I'm a woman and they get, you know, a whole package, a whole pre-packaged social script for how I am telling them that I like to be treated. But on my, on my insides, on my little feely wheelies about gender, on my snowflake SJW feelings, okay, I don't identify with either completely being a man or completely being a woman. But for how I prefer to be treated in society, okay, right, it's not that complicated. But I'm non-binary. And I haven't updated my legal documents yet. Why is that? Why haven't I updated my legal documents yet? I've been out for a year. I've been taking estrogen for over a year, 14 months now. And I haven't updated my legal documents to reflect my change in identity, right? Why am I putting up with still having a, a mister on my passport or whatever? Well, <laughs> it's not out of choice. I have uh, been struggling. I've not, I've not gotten around to doing it. Why is that? Well, you see, first you have to get a deed poll. Then you have to get the deed poll, get a load of copies of it. Get your GP. Cis people, can you imagine asking your GP to do this? Like, and be really honest with me here as well. Like, because that's the fucking thing. Like, I'm not looking for you to, like, just sort of nonchalantly, flippantly, like, nod along. Like, yeah, yeah, it'll be really easy for me to do that. I'll just do that. No, I'd like you to, like, genuinely imagine. You have to get your GP to write a letter to the home office to tell them that you being yourself, your, your, your change, you being you is likely to be permanent. And then I can get my passport updated. But I got my deed poll early in transition, naively thinking that getting my name changed so I have the title mix right, which for those who don't know is the non-binary honor honorific, like Mr. or Miss, Mix. Kind of cute, isn't it, right? I like it. And having the name that I'd prefer as a non-binary person on my deed poll. And then I realized non-binary people don't exist in the um, laws of England and Wales. We can't have those legal identifiers because we don't exist under the law because that is how deeply transphobic our country is to begin with i can't get married as myself i can get married as a woman but to do that i would need to get a gender recognition certificate and to do that i would need to do a a, a formalized deed poll which would involve publishing my new name my previous name, and my address in the paper. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then it would require me to, uh, to, to have my identity evaluated by a panel of anonymous cis people who will never meet me to decide whether I really am who I am. And after all of this, Okay? The only outcomes I can have are two. I can't have a non-binary one. And then I could get married as a woman. Okay? Okay, do you understand? Like, do you understand? Rosie Duffield as an MP attacking non-binary people is... is... transcendentally fucked. Because non-binary people are a group who are so, who are so discriminated against, right, that we don't have re legal recognition under the law of this country. 
She is an MP. Again, attacking someone for the office they hold, right, is, is literally just engaging in democracy. Writing to your MP is a threat now? Right, writing to your MP is a threat. Cool. Cool, good job, Sunday Times. You nailed it. You nailed it. And for those who don't know, the Gender Recognition Certificate, if you live in the UK and you've maybe heard of this stuff before, maybe you don't know that in other countries all over Europe and in the US, they don't use this license to be trans. You don't have to apply to a, to a hidden council of cis people. They just, in, in, in plenty of Europe, let people just say who they are. The same way that you do when you go in the bathroom, right? Because cis people, you don't get into the bathroom by showing people your genitals. There's no bouncer who's like, hmm, hang on now, I'm not sure what's in your pants. You just identify as who you are and stroll into the facilities that you need, okay? And there has been no spike in predatory crimes in any of those countries unless maybe you think that British people are just far more likely to rape than any other nationality on earth. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. Other countries don't use this gender recognition certificate. They don't they don't they don't require a, a license to be trans. That's just a uniquely British punishment. Very cool. Very cool. And on top of all of that, then you are just on a a registry that the government has of trans people. The government just has a little, little list of you. Keep you all neatly right there. They lowered the price of it recently, by the way. Because there's a price, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that. But there was a cost. So that the, all of this process would cost hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of pounds. They lowered the cost recently of the gender, gender recognition certificate very graciously to just five pounds. Just five pounds. So now it's so easy. So any trans person can just go and get on a government list. Yay, it's so easy now. This is fucking disgusting. Rosie Duffield's situation here. And for those who've joined us more recently, let's explain a little bit again. Rosie Duffield is a an absurdly transphobic MP who uh, cares not a fucking jot for democracy or the system that she's been elected into. Um, she blocked my girlfriend for asking for evidence of a policy that she wanted to implement. She's blocked constituents in her own borough who are trans who are asking her to just fucking stop it, please. And now she's done an interview with the Sunday Times saying that she doesn't feel safe going to the Labour Party conference. And I'll say it one more time. They can't ask the trans MPs of the Labour Party if they feel safe going to the Labour Party conference because there are no trans MPs. That's why they can't ask them, because they don't exist. Again, I am mad as hell but they can fucking have it. They can just have the Labour Party. Because Starmer has been bankrupting the Labour Party, okay, and it's just gonna fucking collapse into the sea. And good riddance. Just fucking good riddance. See ya, you fucking Blairite scum. You, yes, traitors to the working class. Yes, absolutely. Fucking bye. Bye. Enjoy your failing party. That's all I can say. That's literally all I can say. Any questions in chat? I'll take questions <laughs> if you want to chat about anything. I just wanted to sum up this situation because I've got a little I've got a little playlist on my archive channel for politics streams and I just thought, hey, you know what? I'll just cover this absolutely fucking sick and disgusting thing that Rosie Duffield and the paper are doing. And let me say another thing really quickly. I watch I watch like what TERFs are up to. I watch what they're saying. Um because I have to, because my life could be in danger in this country. Uh, I don't do it for fun. I do it because I need to know whether they are organizing to um, attack trans people in the streets. London is the um, acid attack capital of, of the world. And uh, I, uh, I worry sometimes that like Posey Parker 
or or some fucking Helen Joyce wannabe is going to just come up to me, find where I live, try and throw acid in my face. Okay? That's why I do it. I don't do it for fun. I don't do it for fun. I do it for my personal safety. Just so you know. But, um, you know, I keep up with what Turfs are saying. And uh, they don't like the Labour Party. They're not going to be won over to the Labour Party because they're an insane fucking cult. <laughs> because they're, 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 a, they're a fucking cult. Okay? And they are... They are convinced that Starmer, Starmer's Labour Party, because they have offered, like... Because not even Starmer's Labour Party, to be clear, not the administration, but just some MPs who are tolerated for now within the Labour Party have offered empty platitudes to trans people. Right? Because of that, because of empty nonsense shit, what, like, while not committing to any policies that would actually change the situation that we are second-class citizens in this country, not committing to any of that, but just, like, offering just, just empty fucking gibberish, right? Because of that, the gender-critical movement, uh, thinks the Labour Party is a lost cause. So, um... You're not going to win them over. I mean, but you can try. But you can try. Go ahead and just alienate all the trans people in your party. Go ahead and drive away all the trans people from your party. Go ahead and drive away all the working class people from your party. Carry on coming on pictures of the Queen, Keith. Carry on. Just carry on. It's great. Good for you. Fucking good for you. The Labour Party is fucking done, is the thing. And also, I mean, for those who know my politics, those who know my, my politics streams a little bit, you know, I'm not really, I don't really, I don't really go in for electoral politics that much. I'm much more, much more of an organizing gal. I, I care a lot more about people going out, learning all their neighbors' names, right? Getting them all to join a renter's union, right? Doing an eviction resistance, right? Claim the, claim the block, take it back from the landlords, evict the landlords, arrest the cops. This is my politics, right? But, but... It matters to me that this stuff is being reported in our national press. That's why this matters to me. It matters to me that this is being reported in our national press and the people who have their hands on the levers of power, right, are craven, nonsense, fucking baby-brained, brainworm losers enough that they buy into this fucking gibberish. I wrote to my local MP again, Neil Coyle. Don't mind naming him. I've, I've said before I live in Southwark. Neil Coyle, okay? I wrote to him. I included my address, because you have to include your address if you want to reply from your MP. And if you include your uh, address, then you are entitled legally to, an impl to a reply from your MP, even if it's just like, oh, I'm busy right now, or it's just a copy-paste template letter. I, I, I wrote to him and I said... I'm a trans woman who is a constituent of yours, and I care a lot about the, the fact that the Labour Party is harboring transphobes like Rosie Duffield, and that you are not condemning them. Oh. And I want you to stand up for equality, for basic human rights, for, for the basic things that someone who calls themselves a progressive should stand up for. And I got no response. And here's the funny thing, is that for all that people try to paint um, London liberal SJW politics as being hyper online, right? It wasn't until I mentioned that I had done that and got no response on Twitter that I got a DM, a DM from Neil Coyle. A DM request in the hidden, uh, uh, the hidden inbox that I don't usually see because it's it's the one for people who don't really interact with me. So Twitter considers it suspicious. So it's usually the DM box that's just full of chases and other people, people asking for pictures of my feet and stuff, right? That inbox, right, the hidden one. I got a DM request from Neil Coyle. You should have received a response from me. Yeah, I fucking know Neil. I should have received a response from you. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have received a DM request from you on Twitter because you were name searching your name on Twitter. Right? Neil, I shouldn't have received 
a DM request from you on Twitter, I should have received a reply from you. I agree, Neil. I should have received a reply from you. I should have received a reply from you that said, I am so sorry, Sophie. Because as you are one of my constituents and your basic human rights are under threat in this country, I will do everything I can to fight for you because I care about you, I care about winning your vote, and I care about democracy, and I care about equality, and I care about people not being treated as second-class citizens, and as such, I will stand up against even the vile bigotry within my own party. But I received no reply until... I mentioned on Twitter that I had received no reply, and then I got a little little slide into the DMs, Neil. Just getting in there, getting in there in between all the chases, saying, Can we make relationship? You are beautiful, BB. How much for feet pick? Will you start OnlyFans? In between all of these ones, I get Neil Coyle saying, You should have received a reply from me. I agree, Neil. I should have. Honestly? I should have is the thing. I should have actually, Neil, is the thing. I should have received a reply from you, and I didn't. Because you were too busy on Twitter searching your own name, Neil, <laughs> for you to reply to someone about their basic human rights being infringed is the thing, Neil. That's what the thing is, Neil. That's the thing. That's the funny little thing about that, Neil. The red wall voters aren't going to be won back. By you saying that a feminist's rights are being threatened by militant trans activists. You know what Boris Johnson does? Keith? Okay, he doesn't come on pictures of the Queen, except for fun, to be clear. He does that for fun, but he doesn't, have to, doesn't do that to win voters, right? He just doesn't mention trans people. He just doesn't talk about us, right? He just doesn't talk about us, and then he, and then he engages in horrific attacks on our human rights, in his policies, and in his government's policies, right? And we have to bring it to the fore. And then because we're, <coughs> because we're bringing it to the fore, because we're writing to our MPs, because we're engaging in basic systems of democracy, we're threatening people. It's the militant trans activists again, right? And it, it creates this perfect culture war. That's what the Tories are doing, this perfect culture war, where they're not talking about it at all, and we're talking about it because our basic rights are under attack, right? And, and because we're talking about it, we look like the crazy ones who are obsessed, right? You're not going to win over red wall voters with... Gender critical feminists don't feel safe at the Labour Party conference in Brighton, by the way, in Brighton, <laughs> because militant trans activists, your, your hypothetical fucking, your, your, by the way, extremely prejudiced, extremely classist picture of this red wall voter called, I don't know, Og Thornton, who fucking carries a club like a caveman, right? This this picture of this guy in your head, Keith, who you're trying to win his vote back, he's not going to read gender critical feminists. <laughs> Feel under attack from trans militant activists in Brighton and can't come to the Labour Party conference and go, yeah, I care about that. I'm going to fight to protect the Labour Party from militant trans activists because I don't want, I don't want... I don't want gender critical feminists to this 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 like this ridiculous straw man you have in your head you're not going to win his vote back that way okay you're just not going to you're just not going to and to be clear you're not going to win back you're not going to win back the people you actually lost by coming on pictures of the queen fucking flags what else is there what else is there probably posing naked with a bulldog probably ne next in in Keith's um next in Keith's manifesto what else could he do? Dress up as Winston Churchill in a big diaper. Walk around going, Goo Goo Gaga. <laughs> I am the baby of Britain. <laughs> <sighs> Those real people, the real people, Keith, are going to get won back by you offering things that would change their lives and would make them... Make them experience a higher quality of life. They're not going to get one back 
by gender critical feminists feel unsafe because of militant trans activists. It's not gonna happen. Hey Alice. AKA fascists don't feel safe at Brighton Labour Party conference. I know! In other breaking news, water is wet! <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Getting dominated by someone dressed up as Cecil Rhodes, maybe? Ah, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I see that. Starmer getting getting gently choked by a Cecil Rhodes impersonator. Yeah, that could do it. That could do it. That'll win back the Red Wall. That'll win back the Red Wall. That'll do it. That'll do it. I mean, I currently think his main policy, his main attempt to win back the Red Wall is by appearing increasingly red. Uh, if you looked at pictures of Keir Starmer recently, he's just redder all the time. I think he's trying to it's trying to do a little bit of like subliminal psychology, right? They're the red wall. He's the red man. He's clearly the man for them, you know? Um, right. Just got a huge number of followers. And I'm assuming that's an attempt at a raid. I'm just scrolling through this. I don't see any actual raid that's taken place, but I think these are all bots. Well, it's a nice try, lads, but I've got my, um, I got my three-month following setting on, so you actually can't chat until you've been following for, for three months. So, sad, really. Um, Keith's gonna get embarrassingly placed splinters from the HMS victory. True. True. Starmer rushed to hospital after falling off the Trafalgar Square plinth, trying to scale it so he can give Horatio Nelson a big ol' smooch on his Horatio. More massive waves of followers. That's interesting. More of these bots, I reckon. Yeah, I'm seeing in my I'm seeing in my streamlabs here. They're trying to do a big big follow. Big ton, ton of followers, um, because, you know, trans people, um, uh, if you tag your stream with transgender on Twitch, then you get these hate raids. Um, see, that's a thing where, that's an interesting thing where on a supposedly, um, a supposedly democratic media platform where anyone can just get on and stream, right, um, uh, if I announce the immutable characteristic I possess as a trans person, then I am experiencing loads of hate raids, right? Now, again, it's not working because I have my three-month follower thing on. People can only chat in my chat if they've been following for three months. Hello to the bots. Hello if you're watching this. If in, if, if, if there is anyone actually behind trying to do this, uh, it's not going to work. They can't. Um, but Rosie Duffield, right... Getting these attacks, again, we just non-specific, but as far as we know, it's just people contacting their MP. Um, because she's an elected MP. It, it's just, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? It's just fucking ridiculous. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sadiq Khan weaselly both sides on this, on Andrew, on Andrew Ma. That's disgusting. That's disgusting. That's really disappointing from Sadiq Khan. I expect better from him. Um, that's really sad. I expect better from him than that. Um, yeah. I mean, what else is there to say? Any questions in chat, you know? Um, yeah. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Uh, they're welcome to the Labour Party. They can fucking have it because Keith is bankrupting the Labour Party and it's gonna be it's gonna collapse and he's already said that he won't work with a progressive coalition um i don't know i don't know does he think he could get elected does he think he has any kind of chances being elected he is sir kia starmer right he's like an islington mp you know what what, what is it he's mp of he was like born in london and he's a, like a london mp hoban right hoban where all the yeah hoban where all the ad agencies are Hoban, where all the startups and ad agencies are in London, right? That's the that's the borough that 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 Keir Starmer represents, and um, he's right. born in London and represents a London constituency, and he's a and he's a and he's a and he's knighted for having been a fucking cop, right? For having been a a, a prosecutor, right? 
And among his policies are trying to make Labour into the party of the family. Law and order. Right? So, like... At a time when, like, abortion rights are massively under threat in the US. Right? He's like, we're the party of the family. At a time when loads of people are feeling alienated and it's just very commonplace. Like, most people do drugs. Because, like, actually drugs are just cool and fun. Um... And a, a way to deal with the crushing ennui of late-stage capitalism. I'm quoting there. I don't really believe it's late-stage capitalism. It's it's modern capitalism. Right? Starmer's like, I'm gonna crack down on drugs. I'm gonna stop people from smoking weed. I'm gonna make it so no one can go up Primrose Hill to watch the fireworks. This will win me votes. It's ridiculous how unpopular this guy is, and how laugh what a laughably bad choice he is, and how awfully he has handled every step of his leadership since getting elected as leader. If I had to guess, I would say the right wing of the party... And this is, this is me trying to attribute them with a lot of political cunning, okay? If I had to attribute them with a lot of political cunning, I would say that they've put Starmer in as their fall guy to do a bunch of shit, purge the left from the party, right? Keep things together while they refigure who their base are, pure... Pure Blairite brain worms. Nothing but Blairite brain worms. Because they think... Because they think... That Blair won on a massive landslide victory. Because he entirely had the support... And only exclusively had the support of Blairite centrists. Neoliberal freaks. Uh, whereas in reality, he had the support of the socialists who are lifelong Labour voters. And his Blairite freaks. And that's what tipped it for him. And since then, the popularity of Blair has gone down enormously in the UK, right? Um, but while they're doing all that stuff, which is obviously going to be unpopular, they put in their laughably unpopular candidate, Sir Keir Starmer. Have you heard the guy talk? Anyway, um, London-born, London MP, Sir Keir Starmer, to do all this shit, and then they'll swap him out for someone who they actually think might win. But I, I don't really attribute them with that much political uh, savvy. I actually don't. And I think that they probably are just um, they're just really fucking bad at this. And I actually think that they're um, that they're gonna win with a new Blair again at a time when Blair is um, less and less popular all the time in the UK because he came in uh, promising a change for Labour, didn't <laughs> didn't change the country, did change Labour into something worse. Uh, Margaret Thatcher called him her greatest achievement. He started an illegal war, and every day that Tony Blair doesn't see the inside of a jail cell is itself a crime. Um, and yeah, Blair is just incredibly unpopular. Just like, people hate him. People actually hate him, is the thing. Um, so yeah, it's very cool. It's a, it's a cool, cool time. At that time when UK hate groups that target trans people are funded by the US religious far right, aka people who push for abortions, uh, paying, pu push for abortion bans, paying transphobia to attack bodily autonomy protections. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, people have been saying, you know, I've been s seeing some people say, for example, like the Texas abortion ban, You'll see them coming for trans people next. Those people, uh, I think, are very ignorant of the situation with trans people. Uh, don't understand that actually these the policies like the Texas abortion ban were actually trialed and tested and figured out on trans people. The, the technologies of governance that they have used here with the Texas abortion ban, they figured those ones out with trans people first. They made our lives unlivable in all these reactionary fascist states like Texas. And then they come for cis women's rights. Um, but, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, same thing here. Worth remembering. Same thing here. Um, Boris. Boris. Um, they, they call him Britain Trump. They call him... Britain Trump, um, Boris, um, would absolutely, um, seek to ban abortions if he thought it was solid and would win over a base of increasingly 
fashy, reactionary, conservative uh, population, if he, if he thought it would win that stuff over. And um, if the media carry on on the path they're on, carry on attacking trans people's rights, that will be the next thing. Because it was the next thing in Louisiana, it was the next thing in Texas, it was the next thing in Florida. Okay, all these places where they've been attacking trans people, now they're attacking abortion. Because, because here's a funny thing about um, The Handmaid's Tale, which again, um, Rosie Duffield could, could maybe sit down and have a, a cheeky little read of that before she puts Margaret Atwood's name in her scum pig mouth again. Um, she could maybe have a cheeky little read of that book and notice that the people who create a hyper-fascist Christian patriarchal authoritarian society in that book in America, the first people they came for were trans people. It's a funny little thing. It's just like a funny little, interesting little like, oh, that's weird. Oh, oh, what a funny little um, historical detail Margaret Atwood just chose to include because she's whimsical, I guess. It probably has nothing to do with real world politics. It's probably just a fun bit. But um, if you're going to say that people are creating a situation for women that's like Gilead in the UK. Um, maybe the first thing you could do is um, <laughs> know what the fuck you're talking about, you fucking dipshit. I don't know, it's just an idea. But, um, but you know, um, it's worth knowing. That's, that's the thing. If the media carry on with their culture war, if the Tories carry on with their thing, and if the opposition doesn't actually oppose anything, and it just carries on like this, and they just trample trans people's rights in the UK, well, trans people will flee. That's what we'll do. Um, frankly, um, I and every, pr practically every trans person I know has a backup plan to where to flee to to get out of the UK if things carry on the way they have been going for the last five years. Um, and, um, and then the trans people will be gone and it'll be a big victory for, um, for the, for the Tories, for Rosie. Good job. Good feminism. Um, Kia will get redder. He'll get his kit off, pose with that bulldog. Maybe he'll even buy a really long ladder so he can climb up and give Nelson a smooch on the Horatio. And uh, he still won't get elected. But all the trans people will be gone. And then the Tories will go for abortion next because they've made their audience, they've made their base into these frothing little reactionary freaks who are desperate for it, who love it. These people with this bloodlust to see minorities hurt. Um... And those people don't care about bodily autonomy. They don't care about the right to choose. Um, those people would rather those rights were restricted. Um, and let's be clear again that I'm talking about a population being transformed. I'm talking about a population being turned into these kinds of people because that's what's been happening in the UK. Uh, people have been getting noticeably more reactionary as a, as a result of the Murdoch-owned press, right? Um, so that's the thing, is it, it's really worth, it's really worth um, remembering that, um, yeah, it's really worth remembering that, like, they'll win that, and then abortion is next. So, you know, that's cool. Good feminism, Rosie. Good feminism. But like I say, she's welcome to the Labour Party. She and all the other obsessive, transphobic freaks who are obsessed. Who are obsessed. Um, funny parallel, by the way. I've been getting hate raids from someone who's obsessed with me. A little transphobic freak who's, um, who's mad that she didn't get famous enough on BreadTube. Um, <laughs> who's been, like, trying to harass me for a while. Really sad. Really, really sad. Um... And there's Rosie Duffield complaining that she gets these attacks again uh, for being an elected MP. You know. Let's have a look at the chat real quick. Let's have a look at, through chat here. The Turfs think that trans people would be the wives in The Handmaid's Tale, which is wrong, but they have brainworms, so... Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. And they keep on calling cis women who defend trans women handmaids, which is a pretty disgusting thing to say. Pretty disgusting. Firstly, it implies that the handmaids in The Handmaid's Tale are um, complicit, as opposed to being what they are in the book, which is rape victims. Um, Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. Turfs are actually a pretty disgusting lot. They're kind of nasty. They're kind of a nasty bunch. They're kind of a a, a nasty little thuggish fascist bunch, and people shouldn't forget that. Most people can't just leave homophobia and transphobia because they're too poor for immigration agencies to accept them. Yes, um, yeah, uh, that's worth saying. That's worth saying. Um, However, Ireland right now doesn't uh, require any kind of process as long as you can move. It's like moving within the UK. You can, like... And I know that moving is expensive. I'm just talking about how shitty things have gotten and how, as I say, almost all the trans people I know uh, have these plans to go somewhere. Some are planning to go to America, some eyeing up different European countries, you know. Um... So there you go, you know, that's really what it is. Um, and I reckon, I reckon I'll wrap it up there and just put this up on the archive, on the archive channel in the, the politics playlist. Um, because what, what more is there to say really besides that, besides that Rosie Duffield can fucking have the Labour Party and a lot of them can fall into the fucking sea. Um, and one day they will achieve true feminism when they get rid of all the gays and all the transgenders and they ban abortion that's when they'll have their real gender critical feminism that'll be really good feminism then all right well see you all tomorrow for an editing stream have a lovely weekend